You can't really create your art until you know what format to create it in. Hence the question, raster or vector? Hi, my name is Heather and today I'm going to answer the age-old question of raster or vector and which one should you use to create your art. First of all, what's the difference? Raster art is JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs, yes I pronounced it GIF, <laughs> that are made up of a bunch of pixels. They're just a bunch of tiny little dots and each one can be a different color. So it can be a slightly different shade of green and then the next one can be a little of a different shade of green and it all combines to make some kind of really detailed and in-depth photo or artwork with a lot of shading, blending, and all these different little nuances that make it into a complex image. Vector files, on the other hand, can be SVG, EPS, Adobe Illustrator files. Those are made up of actual mathematical formulas. Because of this, you can literally resize it to any size and the program will just recalculate with that new size and basically redraw it at the bigger size. So you can actually resize it to any size without it getting blurry or pixelated. It will always be nice clean lines. The thing that makes vector files so different is that because it's made up of all these shapes, each of those shapes can be a single color. So it's really best for like very flat artwork that's not going to have blending or shading. It would just be very flat shapes that make up an image. Here's an example. If you were to draw a circle in a raster program like say Photoshop or Procreate, you're going to draw the circle and it's going to look clean when you first draw it. But when you zoom in, you're going to see all these little pixels that make up the edge of the circle. On the other hand, if you draw a circle in say Illustrator or Affinity Designer, then when you zoom in, you're just going to see a clean line no matter how far you zoom. And this is because it literally uses the mathematical formula for a circle. So this big formula is what it actually saves in its file instead of this pixel, this pixel, this pixel is this color, this pixel, this pixel, this pixel is this color. It's actually saving that formula for you. And luckily the program does all the math. Like you don't even have to know that it's using this mathematical formula. But it is important that you just understand how it works because it'll help you determine which kind of artwork that you should make for which situation. So if you were to take that circle and make it bigger, then you would be increasing the radius, which is just one of the variables in that formula. And so the program is just going to plug in that new number for the radius and recalculate. So it's basically redrawing the image and the image is still gonna be nice, clean, perfect lines. Another really neat kind of side effect of using vector is that the file size a lot of times will be smaller because like all it's using for a circle is that one mathematical equation, whereas the raster version is saving every little pixel. So that's a lot of information that that would need to save. Which should you use, raster or vector? This depends on what you're actually going to use the final artwork for. If you're going to use it for the Cricut, the Glowforge, or any kind of machine that needs to follow a path, then vector is the way to go. Because vector files are made up of paths rather than pixels. They're actually made up of lines and curves, and that's what your machine can follow. If you do make a raster image, like a JPEG or a PNG, and you try to bring it into the Cricut or the Glowforge or whatever you're using, it's actually just going to convert it to vector anyways. And because of that, you should make the original file as vector because when it converts that raster image to vector, it's basically tracing around the image and it's not going to be perfect. 
it might look really good at first glance, but when you zoom in, you'll see that like some of the corners will be almost more like curves. There might just be some like weird spots where there may have been details in the artwork and they're just not gonna come out right. So if you create it yourself in Vector, then it's not gonna get modified once it gets pulled into the program and you have complete control over what it's gonna end up looking like. Also, I have a ton of tutorials for how to bring a sketch into a vector program and hand trace it so that you have a vector version of your drawing. And I have that in multiple vector programs. Definitely take a look. I will link them in the description. If you're creating artwork for say a children's book or to print from a regular printer to make art prints or bookmarks or anything like that, and that includes using a sublimation printer, then raster is the way to go. The only time you'd really want to use vector in that kind of situation is if your artwork is already a very flat style and you don't use any kind of shading or blending and you just want to use flat colors and shapes. Then you can do it in vector because at least it will be portable to other things like the Cricut. And if you're more comfortable drawing in vector, then you know, that would make sense for you. But that's a very specific case. So if your artwork has any kind of blending or shading or anything like that, then definitely go with raster. The one thing you have to look out for though when you are drawing in raster is just that you start with the right size. You're not gonna be able to size it up. It's gonna end up looking pixelated or blurry. So when you create your artwork, you need to create it at least as big as you need for the final product. So for example, if you're illustrating a children's book and you're not really sure what size it's going to be, then just go big and make it like 10 inches by 10 inches. And that way you'll be able to size it down, but you probably won't need to size it up at all. That is it for raster versus vector. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.